As I've been going through the paces on this channel, like searching for new Skylanders to talk about and writing the scripts, I'm slowly beginning to realize that I'm starting to run out of ideas. I tried to make three different scripts this week alone going over three different topics, but I realize that I'm either going to have to do a ton of research for it and it's just going to take too long, or I'm just not going to reach that 8 minute mark that I want to try and push the 10 because the algorithm is just not being my friend right now. So as I thought about what to do, I began to realize that I might be able to touch on other topics that I've already covered on this channel before, so I started to do a bit of digging and found a bunch of stuff that I could cover. But the thing that always stood out to me the most were the knights. Because of how numerous they are within the Skylanders, I have a multitude of Skylanders to pick from, and I slowly began to realize that there are a bunch of knights within the game that caught my attention. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to go on a journey to find the rest of the knights within the Skylanders organization that stand out to me. So without any more stalling, let's jump straight into it. Looking shop! Now, I know that putting Blades here is a strange choice because he should be in a dragon video, but what makes him stand out to me at least is that he's a dragon who became a knight. The reason I say he's strange is because of what usually happens when you put a dragon and a knight in the same sentence. Someone usually dies, and most of the time, it's the dragon. So let's take a look at his backstory and see why this is the case. Blades comes from a long line of dragons who protected the dungeons of Scalos Castle, where a serpent known as the Fear Serpent had slept for almost a century. Even though it was considered and honored by most of the dragons in his line, Blades found the task rather... boring. He was a dragon who would rather explore far-off lands as a knight and be renowned as the best there ever was, but knowing the importance of his job, he would stay put. One evening, however, a deafening roar shook the entirety of the castle as a wave of fear engulfed it, Blades quickly realizing what just happened. The serpent had awoken. Knowing what he had to do, Blaze would enter the dungeon, fighting through his own fear and dread with each step before he eventually entered the golden chamber where the snake resided, and came face to face with it. The serpent would grin at the small dragon who stood before him, and surprisingly, it would make Blaze an offer. If he were to remain in the tomb for the rest of eternity, he would not only leave the kingdom be, but he would also return to his slumber for another 100 years. Knowing that the safety of the kingdom and everybody who resided in it was more important than his personal quest for glory, Blades would accept the deal, expecting the worst to come only for his fear to suddenly disappear. Unknown to everyone at the time, the only way a person could defeat or vanquish the Fear Serpent was to face their fear head on, which is exactly what Blades did in that moment putting aside his fear to protect the innocent people of the Scalos Kingdom. News about Blade's victory over the Serpent would soon spread across the Kingdom, and soon it would spread outside of it as well, eventually reaching the ears of Eon, who would immediately drop almost everything to go meet the young dragon and invite him into the Skylanders. And probably due to the fact that Blades didn't need to guard the dungeon anymore, he would join the Skylanders, but this is not where his story ends. In fact, this is where it starts. Sometime before Trap Team, Blades would become a student at Skylanders Academy and achieve legendary status, becoming the youngest Skylander to ever obtain it, and because of that, the power would almost immediately go to his head, and it would all boil over in the Champion's comic book. And I apologize if I get something wrong because I am looking at the wiki, and as of recording, I wasn't able to find the book anywhere. In the book, he, along with Bouncer, Night Shift, and Trigger Happy would be sent on a mission together, and during that mission, he would charge it and take down a Dro leader without getting any information out of him about a device called the Machine Magnus. He would get scolded by Night Shift and Bouncer only for the young dragon to declare that he didn't need a team before flying off to destroy the machine himself. And to make a long story short, Blaze would lose access to his legendary state because the machine cuts him off from the portals, he would be overwhelmed, the others would show up, and they would work together to to beat Magnus and destroy his machine, Blaze learning a valuable lesson on teamwork. Now, the biggest thing that I need to address when it comes to this comic is what's going on with the legendary state mentioned in it. It seems like a way to include the legendary characters in the comic, but if you know what legendaries actually are in the lore, you're going to be really confused. Legendary Skylanders are not only separate entities from the original Skylanders, but they need special portal masters to even function. So that just raised the question of what's going on here. Now, this is a guess, but what I think is happening is that the Skylanders are harnessing the powers from their statues somehow. But I can't really be sure because once again, I just don't know where to find the book. But with that out the way, I think it's about time that we get to the next Skylander of today. Freedom and freedom. 
When it comes to all the Skylanders that are considered knights by the wiki, Ambush has to be one of the strangest out of all of them. Out of all the Skylanders who are listed as knights, he's the one who feels the most detached from the aesthetic. So I did a bit of research and I was able to find out some pretty interesting things surrounding his development. That might explain what's going on here. According to the wiki, this is another one of Natlo's Skylanders that he designed, and he originally went by the name of Weedwhacker during his development. And speaking of his development, Nat would say that he has the most complicated animation setup of any Skylander he's worked on. If my interpretation of his words are correct, his Wushu-inspired attacks work like Star Killers, where it branches out depending on what you do. And because of that, Nat Lowe and the boys need to make a ton of animations for all of them. So they were forced to simplify his design to make the process easier. Which is probably why they changed his name. But with that out the way, let's get into his backstory and see what's going on here. Before Ambush was a sensei of the Night class, he used to be a guardian of the mystical bamboo forest, which was considered one of Skyland's greatest natural wonders, and because of that, he would make sure that nobody enters. Even Chaos's mom. Cassandra would try to invade the forest with chainsaw trolls, as she wanted to use the ancient trees for display in her royal courtyard, and this drove Ambush up the wall like never before. He saw this as an atrocity and swore revenge, and wielding his mythical sword, he would send not only the trolls, but Cassandra herself into hiding, and once Eon heard of his tales, he would make him a sensei, where he would go on to teach a new generation of Skylanders. But with that out the way, let's talk about this. Now, the thing that caught my attention involving this story is that Chaos's mom is even involved, because near the end of Swap Force, the second to last level in fact, she's trapped in a mirror, and if the wiki is correct, she's still stuck in the mirror during the events of Superchargers. So either two things are going on here. Either this story happens before Swap Force, which can date back as far as a century to my knowledge, or this story takes place sometime between Superchargers and Imaginators, which is probably the more likely scenario because I doubt that Ambush is over 100 years old. But another thing that I noticed is that this event was described as an atrocity, which is strange for multiple reasons. Firstly, this story is pretty confusing on if the trees were even cut down or not, as it's never directly stated in the story if this happened. And secondly, it makes me wonder if the trees are actually sentient. Ambush himself looks like he's made from tree bark, and we don't exactly know where he comes from. So maybe he was created by the forest itself, either naturally like a life cycle for the trees within it, which would explain why he sees it as an atrocity, or he was magically created for the purpose of protecting it. Remember, just because magic is involved doesn't mean that you are inherently of that element. We've seen multiple stories where magic plays a role for a Skylander that isn't part of that element, but that's a discussion for another day. For now, let's wrap things up and get to our last Skylander. When it comes to Wildstorm, the reason why he's here in the first place isn't because he's strange or anything, but his design stuck out to me a lot because I don't exactly know what he's supposed to be. Yes, he follows the Knight aesthetic with his gauntlets and greaves, but I'm not exactly sure what he's supposed to be as a species. So I tried to do some digging, and apparently he's just one of those Skylanders who didn't have any development history. Or a race either. So with that said and done, let's actually take a look at his history and see if we can find any hints there. By the time he was 10 years old, Wildstorm had mastered the Airblade, but with no family around to take care of him, he spent much of his early life traveling throughout Skylands as a bounty hunter, offering his combat services to the highest bidder as a soldier of fortune. On one such occasion, he was hired by Chaos to break into the pirate outpost in the Sky Highlands to steal their legendary gold detector, but little did Wildstorm know that he was only being used by Chaos to scout their defenses, and he was immediately captured by the pirates. While he was imprisoned in the highest tower in the Sky Highlands, and as the powerful winds blew through his cell, his anger grew, Wildstorm deciding that he would no longer be contained. Harnessing the energy of a storm, he grew three times his size and broke out of his prison, vowing to put a stop to chaos once and for all, and soon after, he met Master Eon, who agreed to help him with his quest, if Wildstorm would share his skills and swordsmanship with the other Skylanders. And he would agree, becoming a sensei of the Night class. Now, the thing that interests me the most about his history is that he used to be a mercenary who worked with chaos, but my main question is, why did he betray Wildstorm? From the parts of the story that I read, there was literally no reason to screw him over. If anything, Chaos actually had someone under him that was somewhat competent enough to get things done. So, what gives? To be completely honest with you, I think it's just a mixture of just not thinking his plans through and pure idiocy on Chaos's end, because there's no reason to send a spy somewhere, 
if they aren't going to come back and report that information. It would just be a waste of time and effort on everyone's part. But with that out the way, this is where I'm going to bring this video to a close. Like always, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy content like this, share this around so I can grow the channel, leave some comments down below to make the algorithm happy, and I will see you all in the next one.